A lot of work has clearly went into making the Splatoon 3 player experience much better than it was in Splatoon 2. But that doesn't mean everything is perfect. While I do make a lot of silly videos about Splatoon 3 and the future of this game, this video is focused specifically on seeing what they could do in Splatoon 4 to make the game just better. The first one is simple. Can we please bring back more ink color variety? Here's the chart of all the different ink colors that you'll see normally when you're playing Splatoon 3. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's it. It's just kind of that. There's a lot of blurple, there's a lot of yellow. There's not really too much going on. If I had to pick a color combo I miss, where's, where's the blue and yellow from Splatoon 2 ranked? That's a good color combo right there, ooh. And it would be really nice to have more options in the future. And you know, along with that, maybe even a couple other color lock modes. Alright, I might be the person who loves pools, but the pool system still needs an overhaul. The pool system was added in six months after Splatoon 3 came out. Really unfortunate. How often have you wondered, hey, where is everybody? The simplest thing that they could do to make the pool system more accessible would be to make it that so if your friends are online, you could see what pool they're in. If you knew all your friends were in the table turf pool, or the squid party pool, or the auto bomb pool, it would make the experience just so much better. Honestly, more text and information in general would be super good. Did you know that there are people out there that still don't know that Salmon Run replay codes exist? These scenario codes let you retry other people's scenarios forever. They don't expire. Like, you get told this at like the very bottom of the screen when you're looking at a scenario code, but a lot of people are probably never gonna see it because they don't think about using it. It was added on later in the game. They added that new fast forwarding feature recently where you can hold down the A button to go through a match faster after it's over, but a lot of people won't know it ever exists. It was thrown in as a single line in a recent update. Not everybody's gonna see it, there are people that are going to buy this game a year from now and not know about so many of the features in this game because nothing says they even exist. I bet one person watching this video right now, at least, has no idea that the replay graphs even exist. Look at all this delicious data. All this information about your matches, you're letting this go to waste. It's so sad. Can we bring back the little blurb that shows up when your teammates use a special? Like, wh why'd they take that out? It seriously is so useful. I mean, yes, you can look up at the top of the screen and see when your teammates have their special ready, and you can be aware of when they're using their special by seeing that little rainbow shine go away. But a lot of people aren't gonna notice that over a pop-up that tells you not only which teammate is using their special, but what the special is. If you don't have every single kit memorized, you might just see your teammate's special go away and not think too much of it. What if knowing that your teammate was popping missiles allows you to make a push happen in solo queue? What if knowing that one of your teammates is popping a hammer behind the tower right now to keep you safe would let you get on the tower and get that push and get the lead? Being aware of what your teammates are doing makes you a stronger player, makes your teammates better at what they're doing, and lets you guys as a unit play at your best. I feel like the awareness lost from this is still felt now when I play Splatoon. It just makes such a difference knowing what's going on. Splatoon 3 has that big old computer in the middle of the lobby, and that computer really doesn't have as much information as you'd think. Yes, it houses the replays, sure, it has information about challenges, anarchy open, and a few other things, but there's so much information that's locked into the Nintendo Switch Online app that some people are never going to be able to see. Stuff related to Splatfests, stuff related to Salmon Run, information about your weapon statistics. Some of that information I feel like could also be available on the lobby PC, just so people have access to it without having to grab their phone, grab their tablet. What if they wanna order gear? I get it, it incentivizes you to use the app, but I feel like that could be on the computer as well if they wanted to do that. There's also so many statistics that we just don't have in general. What about more information for subs, mains, and specials when it comes to your win rate? Currently that information is available on the app, but it takes into account your private battle statistics as well. 
which makes that number not very useful when you're trying to climb for a specific badge. Speaking of climbing for badges, both Salmon Run and Table Turf suffer from having badges that take a really, really long time to get. And these incentives, whether you're talking about a 999 VP badge for a specific map, or reaching a really high level in Table Turf, it's just difficult to incentivize the average player to want to grind for these badges. The rewards that you get from Salmon Run in Splatoon 3 are good, except for the fact you don't get very much money, and except for the fact that you don't get very much catalog points. This means that if somebody's near the end of the season, they're not gonna play Salmon Run because they have other priorities. And Table Turf is even worse, because in Table Turf, you don't get player EXP at all. And that's not gonna make people wanna play your game, which is really unfortunate because both the Table Turf and Salmon Run communities have grown quite a bit over the course of this game, and a lot of people really love these side modes. Seeing them have better incentives in the future would be great, whether it's giving individuals more cash from playing in the game, or just making sure the catalogs provide a little bit more points. E either one, either one would be good. Honestly, both would probably be for the best. Remember how earlier I was talking about how some big updates only show up in a single line or two inside of the patch notes and you never ever see them again? This has got to stop. I think that we should take advantage of the already present news system in the game with our idols and make sure if there's anything important, don't just tell the player, hey, go online and check out these updates. I think the most important updates should be just stated in game. You know, you got the big man TV. I'm sure it won't be there in Splatoon 4. We'll have something different, but just put it on the screen. Maybe even have a pop-up show up that's so an individual player can see the news directly in front of them and just scroll up and down a little bit on their screen on the announcement page prior to actually being able to move on past the news. This would make sure that players have the opportunity to see what is new instead of learning secondhand while they're playing preventing them from really being aware of it at first, especially if they don't check the news and only play on occasion. There are other things that could be announced too. Make a bigger deal out of salmon run rotations that are special. You know how many times people have been like, oh, there's a special randomized salmon rotation? And you know what? When it comes to the news, you guys aren't gonna like this one, but I think we need to bring back non-skippable news. You know why? I have heard many times people say that Deep Cut doesn't have very much personality, but they've been adding more and more dialogue for Deep Cut as this game has progressed. And a lot of people probably haven't read most of it, because if you skip the news, you're never going to be able to hear about Big Man Shiver and Fry if you've just moved on. Alright, and here's a classic. Never really required, but having custom kits would still be really nice. I can't tell you how often I've desired just to try something new. Maybe to have an all burst bomb fight, but maybe I don't want to play splash o -matic or L3 or the other options provided by the game. Maybe I just want to goof around. It would also incentivize people to play private battles, since not everybody wants to play them. Private battles don't provide any money or experience, and, as mentioned beforehand, mess up your stats on your app, so wh why, w why would you want to play them if it's going to mess up your information about your badges, right? Finally, we need the customization in Splatoon to truly feel custom. Freshest Fits were a great step forward, seeing as now any player is able to save a number of kits to their game and swap back and forth between them. You can even change sensitivity, you could even change your motion settings. There's so much that you can add on right there. Then you go to your locker and you realize, oh hey, I, I can only have one of these. Some people spend a really long time on their locker. What if you wanted to be able to swap between a couple of different designs? What about individuals that maybe have favorites that they'd like to use for each season? What about people who just want to be able to experiment without leaving their old design behind? It's very easy to accidentally leave a locker like mid-decoration and then save and be like, oh, okay, I guess, I guess my old stuff is all gone now, huh? I did that. That's why my locker is empty right now. <laughs> you could say the same thing for banners. When you go and make a banner, you only get one banner. This wasn't as big of a problem in the early days of Splatoon 3, where the number of banners available was limited, and not every player had a ton of titles. 
But now, if you've been playing basically the whole time, you have not only this giant wall of titles you have to scroll through every single time you play, but you also have a lot of different banners and probably a lot of different badges to choose from. While it's not a humongous issue, it's something that could be improved upon. But for now, all we can do is wait and enjoy what we have. But yeah, that's really it for this video. I hope that you agree on some of the things that I bring up here. I really miss that little blurb. I really do. Bring back the special blurb. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a good one.